Alex Crook, what have you got? Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, guys. I think we can safely say that uh, Trevor Sinclair's campaign to get Michael Carrick the job for the rest of the season will probably fail. That's because Manchester United have two uh, definite lists. One is for a potential interim manager until the end of the season, the likes of Rudy Garcia, the former Lyon manager, and Onisto Valverde, the ex-Barcelona boss, Definitely on that list. But we know their main target. We spoke about it yesterday. Maurizio Pochettino, very much the man they want to, to replace Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the long term at Old Trafford. I said this story is developing all the time. It certainly is because we hear this lunchtime that PSG have rejected Manchester United's initial approach for Maurizio Pochettino. They've sounded out the French giants about whether Pochettino would be available immediately. And at the moment, that approach has been knocked back. Do we know, Alex, when United meet the pitch? Uh, I, th- I understand it's been in the last 24 hours. I think this has even caught Manchester United by surprise because when they dismissed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the weekend and they put that line in the statement that I said yesterday uh, was a bit unusual, uh, admitting they're looking for an interim manager, that was because they believe that Maurizio Pochettino would be in situ in Paris at least until the summer then intermediaries between Pochettino and United start talking. So actually, he would come now. He's so desperate for this job. If you could get him out of Paris Saint-Germain, he would walk to Old Trafford. That's why they've made the approach. It is only an initial approach. I would expect more talks to be taking place. The timing isn't ideal, is it, with Paris Saint-Germain taking on Manchester City this evening. And I wonder if Zinedine Zidane is also throwing a potential spanner in the works because he's the man that PSG, in an ideal world, would like to replace Pochettino with always looked possibly a difficult fit given his links with Marseille and some comments he's made about PSG in the past but also the fact that we know Zidane is reluctant to return to work mid-season so I think there's lots of talks going on on both sides I was told by a decent source this morning that Manchester United were confident they could get Pochettino in place by the middle of next week so clearly they won't give up despite this initial inquiry being knocked back Cookie would you say that there's definitely a compensation clause in Pochettino's contract because if there is what's the problem exactly uh, <laughs> certainly there is a compensation clause I Simon, you're shaking a, your head well I it's thought around Julian, about I thought Julian 10 million Laurent's, euros Crookie I, I think we asked that of Julian Laurent yesterday and I think he was I think I, I, I'm right in saying that he was pretty strong about the fact that he didn't think there was one there's no oh, release obviously. clause but the compensation Julian expected but, but the, compensation, com- the compensation quid. fee that PSG would want for Pochettino would be around 10, 10 million yeah. euros but I think they would want a, a new manager lined up, i.e. a Zidane. I mean, it's very difficult, isn't it? They're competing for the French title. They're still in a strong position in the Champions League. But Manchester United need to put their money where their mouth is. You know, they, they can't mess around with this. I know Trevor has talked about Michael Carrick staying on an interim basis. He did well last night, Carrick, with the substitutions that he made. He was bold in his team selection, leaving out the likes of, of Bruno Fernandes. But they've been down this road before, yeah. Manchester United. We know when a new manager comes in, particularly a club legend, he can give an initial uplift. Do we really think Michael Carrick is the man even to steady the ship for the rest of the season? United have got to go really aggressive now in their approach for Pochettino. And, and when we say turn down an approach, what we're saying is PSG have rejected Manchester United's approach to speak to Maurizio Pochettino, right? Basically, yeah, to see if he would be uh, available to leave now and, and, and hold talks about the vacancy at Old Trafford. Um, whether that would change if, if, if it looked like they wouldn't get out of the, the Champions League group, because, of course, that very much is, is the holy grail for Paris Saint-Germain, or whether Pochettino might actually have to force his way out of the club. I'm not sure that's his style. Uh, in the news headlines there, we said that he distanced himself from the job yesterday. I'm not sure he really did, you know, if you look at the wording. Yeah. What he said was that he's happy in Paris and he's got a contract. He didn't come out categorically and say, I don't want to leave and I don't want to go to Manchester United. And and this does bear similarities when he was in position at Southampton and we know that Tottenham had a pretty lengthy behind-the-scenes pursuit of him for pretty much six months. I asked him every press conference pre-match, are you going to Tottenham? Never once did he say he wasn't. He kept saying he was happy at Southampton. Then he waited till the end of season party and said, by the way, mm. to his players, I'm off to Tottenham. Okay, Pochettino, Manchester United don't come calling every year. What would you say is the chances of him being at Manchester United very soon? Well, I guess this is his fear, isn't it? Because we know that when he was out of work before, 
I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had a must-win game against Everton and ended up winning at Goodison Park. Edison Cavani, from memory, scored a, a late goal that day to keep him in a job. Had he not have got that result, then I think Pochettino was ready and waiting to come in. And we saw what happened. He got a result, Solskjaer, and Pochettino ends up at Paris Saint-Germain. I guess the fear for Pochettino is if he sits on his hands until the summer. So they do bring in an, an Isto Valverde, and he takes them deep into the Champions League. He gets them into the top four, maybe even puts an FA Cup in the trophy cabinet. What happens then? <laughs> Do they almost feel compelled yeah. then to give him a full-time contract and that close the door well, on Pochettino? Well, I'm sure Alex, that's what I mean, Pochettino will be wrestling with. Certainly, Alex, yesterday, Simon, you were saying, Manchester United, if it's Pochettino you want, get yeah. on with it. Well, absolutely. I think Alex is saying the same thing. Yeah. I think anybody that looks at it properly and pragmatically, if you've made your mind up and Pochettino is who you want, it doesn't. you don't need permission to talk to Pochettino because you know Pochettino wants to come. What you need is to do a deal with PSG. So the deal is very simple. We're going to take your manager one way or the other, right? <laughs> we're going to do it with you and nicely and we'll, we'll have a deal or we're going to do it a different way. But I also think if Pochettino is a man and wants to go to Man United, he has to come to the party himself. I'm not advocate. I don't like it because on one hand, I'm criticising, you know, Marco Silva for getting out of, of Watford. On the other hand, I'm advocating the same thing and hypocrisy abounds. But at this level, I suspect it's more realistic than the level that we we're talking about with Silva. If, if Pochettino wants to leave and really wants to go to Man United, then he may have to set the situation on fire himself as well. He can't just yeah. sit there yeah. prevaricating, going, uh, I'm very happy in France. He has to turn around after this set of games. If United want to come in, he's going to have to say to the ownership of PSG, I'm sorry, lads, we're all grown up here. This is not working out for me. You're going to get 10 million quid. Go fill your boots with it down who you want it, but it isn't me anymore. Yeah. He's going to yeah. have to perhaps do that. Mind you, what we have seen with PSG before, Simon, is when they dig their heels in, they dig their heels in. They, this was a club that said no to Real Madrid when they came coming. Uh, they came forward with a £180 million offer for Mbappe. But that's fine. That's a player. A manager is something very different because the manager is in control of the players. And players' contracts will always trump it a little bit more. In this instance, I, I look at the reality of it and say, what do they do? I'm not advocating this. What do they do if he walks out? Hmm. What do they do? I know he won't want to because he won't have the courage of his convictions. He won't do it. But what do they do contractually? I Brucey tried to do it to me years ago. He got stuck on garden and leave, right? Because I had the courage of my convictions to do it. But what do they do if he says, I'm going to walk out, I'm going to leave because I want to go to Manchester United, I mean what I say, I'm going to leave, so you need to come to the table with Manchester United. That that part I can't make for you, but I, well, I can make your minds up for you, PSG. I don't want to manage you anymore. I mean, tell me, Alex... Well, I think that would be difficult because I think PSG would probably feel compelled to go down the, the same route that you did all those years ago um, with Steve Bruce because... But it didn't I fix anything bit... and Steve Bruce still went to Birmingham. What it did was protected my position and made sure that Birmingham couldn't get him for nothing, which in the end was the only outcome. Yeah. In this instance... And if that's you're why gonna, you did it. If you're gonna, not really, but it was the ultimate weapon to push back on what David Sullivan and David Gold were trying to do. But the fact of the matter is it commits people's mindset to having a conversation because you've got a guy now that you can keep but against his will. I think what's also interesting, and I think Jim is right to uh, draw parallels with the uh, situation involving Mbappe, PSG's owners want to put across the facade they are one of the biggest clubs in European mm. football. It doesn't look great for them if their manager says, actually, you're not good enough for me, I'm going to Manchester United, because historically they're still more of a powerhouse. I wonder if that might come into their, their, their thinking It's a good well. point. Yeah. yeah. It's a good so, point. so, Alex, before you go, just re-emphasize that news for us, and you have this to yourself, may, may I say, uh, the news regarding PSG and the approach. Well, as we understand it, and we're hearing from multiple sources, PSG have rebuffed an initial approach from Manchester United about the immediate availability of their manager, Maurizio Pochettino. Now, of course, they do have, as I mentioned, a huge game in the Champions League against Manchester City this evening. The timing not ideal on that front. I would expect talks between United, Pochettino's intermediaries, and PSG to continue. Alex, United what does it still approach look ahead. like? When you talk about... Rebuffed. What does that approach look like? Does it mean that Ed Woodward's picked up the phone to somebody at PSG? Is that what we're suggesting has happened? No, I think there are intermediaries I involved. So I think at the moment the conversations are, are between the, the, the two clubs and those intermediaries. I guess you mean agents? It's... Agents. Yeah, I did. yeah, I'm using a nicer word, Simon, because uh, I know your views on agents. <laughs> that, 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 that's how the conversations are happening yeah. and you, and you uh, have at to this moment that. in time. But Ed Woodward very much involved. Yeah, yeah. Edward were very much involved, which in itself is a bit 
interesting, isn't it? Because, of course, he is effectively just serving his notice, but he has very kindly offered that maybe he might extend that notice period uh, to help the new manager bed in. He's such a generous soul, is Edward. <laughs> OK, well, if Valverde or uh, Rudy Garcia are sitting at home at the moment, open the phone or ring, maybe they're going to be disappointed. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.